Hi, I am Dr. Venkatesh. I am a consultant neonatologist. Today, I am teaching the QP-QS ratio. The QP stands for pulmonary circulation and the QS stands for systemic circulation. I would like to start with a case scenario. A 14 days old neonate was brought to pediatric emergency room with poor feeding, hurried breathing and vomiting. On examination, the respiratory rate was around 80 per minute. Saturation was around 88%. And he was dull looking. He was started on IV fluids. He was started on oxygen. Subsequently put on CPAP and the chest x-ray was performed. The chest x-ray did not show any pathological evidence. The echocardiography was performed which demonstrated the ventricular septal defect subbiotic measuring around 7.5 mm. The shunt across the ventricular septal defect was left to right. There was a good flow across the pulmonary valve. The diagnosis was made subbiotic VST, left to right shunt. So, thinking in terms of baby in cardiac failure, the QPQS ratio also was performed. The QPQS ratio was 4.3 to 1, meaning the pulmonary circulation was 4.3 five times more than systemic circulation. He was started on furosemide, enolopil malleate, gradually improved, came out of CPAP, reached full feeds, directly suckling on the breast, got discharged couple of weeks after the admission and he did well at the time of discharge and he was advised to continue the diuretics and also the enolopin malleate advised to come back again after a week for performing echocardiography. How QPQS ratio is demonstrated on echocardiography? 2D echo and Doppler technologies are used to demonstrate the QS ratio, the parasternal long axis and five chamber view are used. In the parasternal long axis where the probe is kept in the second intercostal space on the left side parasternally with the marker facing to the right where you can measure the diameter of the aorta. In the five chamber view where the probe is kept in the apical area you get four chamber view just tilting the probe up tilting up probe, you open the left ventricle into the aorta, this is called 5 chamber view. Here the pulse wave Doppler is kept at the aortic valve where the flow is entering from left ventricle to aorta, you get the velocity time integral. The diameter and the flow is considered to measure the systemic circulation. The formula used pi r square pi is 3.14 r the radius of iota that is square of that divided by divided by 4 
times the velocity time integral which we derived from the five chamber view will give the systemic circulation. To derive the pulmonary circulation, the parasternal short axis is used where the probe is kept in the second intercostal space parasternally with the marker facing to the left shoulder joint. You get great vessel view where the aorta and around which you see the pulmonary artery. This view is used to demonstrate the pulmonary diameter and also the velocity time integral where the pulse wave Doppler or continuous wave Doppler is kept just below the pulmonary valve to demonstrate velocity time integral. And again the same formula is used pi 3.14 times the radius of pulmonary artery where it is demonstrated between the hinges of the pulmonary annulus and the velocity time integral which we got using pulse wave Doppler or continuous wave Doppler. So pi r squared they have divided by 4 times velocity time integral again the same formula and that will give you the pulmonary circulation. In our index case at the time of admission it was 4.5 is to 1 post therapy it became 1.3 is to 1 so the significance of qp qs ratio one you can know the magnitude of pulmonary circulation that means an index of cardiac failure the second how the baby responds to the therapy. So these are two important significant values this QPQS ratio has. So my friends, any neonate comes with congenital heart disease, especially asymptomatic congenital heart disease, having left to right shunt and will be symptomatic. Better to perform the QPQS ratio Thank you so much.